Hello everyone! Welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. So today I have one more St. Patrick's Day project for you and we're going to do a very simple geode style coaster. So if you don't know what to make and you don't know how to do them, this is a really simple way to do them. And I'm using a couple different colors for the shamrock. So I have chosen, these two are by Estoyo, so this is called... I don't know why I read these. Flash green and tender green. They actually are spelled correctly. So I'm going to use those two and I'm going to use my beautiful crystal white by Unicone. I love this one. It sparkles so nicely. This one looks like it's got a lot of sparkle in there too. This one, not too much. So we're going to blend these and we're going to get that beautiful effect that you get with the geode coaster when you add clear into the middle of them. So I'm going to set those aside. Now these hold, I think, three to four ounces. I'm going to fill them about, I don't know, two ounces in each one right now. That way I have room for a top coat. And um, depending on what the center looks like after it's completed, if I don't like it, then I might put something on there, whether it be glitter or a decal or something to that effect. But I never worry about that until it's completely done and see what it looks like. So I'm going to mix up eight ounces. So that's two for six, eight, two for each coaster. Then I'm going to split it four ways each of these and then my white. So out of eight ounces, I'm going to keep minimum three ounces clear, probably four. I think I'm gonna keep four ounces clear so I could put one ounce in each one of clear after we pour the, the these colors. So let me get that mixed up and I will separate them with you. I decided to try my large paddle on this mixer that came with it in this cup because it's eight ounces so it's working brilliantly as long as you keep it submerged there's hardly any bubbles forming now i'm using my casting resin by let's resin because it will move the longest amount of time for those striations to work so this i have set on the ai button which automatically mixes it for you for four minutes and shuts off so you don't have to time it so if you guys haven't seen this yet this is their newest mixer and i love it i loved the last one but this one's even better because of the AI function. So if you just keep your paddle submerged, like I said, I do scrape my sides. But if you come out like that, like I just did, you're going to end up with bubbles. See the bubbles I just created? Otherwise, there were rarely bubbles being mixed into this thing. So it doesn't matter because I'm using mica powder, so I'm not concerned about the bubbles. I may put my clear through the um, vacuum chamber just so I can keep my clear bubble list but it's it really doesn't matter actually i'm not going to bother with that because it's going to get mixed with my mica powders anyway in the coaster so i'm not too concerned about it but if you're trying to get a clear um, resin and you don't have a vacuum chamber then i do recommend getting a mixer like this i do have a discount code 10 percent in my description box so if you guys do not have one and you want to splurge on something this is a great tool to have so I'm just going to let this finish up and then we'll get these colors all uh, separated out and mixed up. All right, I've got these three cups, which are about equal amounts. I kept just under four ounces of clear and I'm going to use that for the centers here. So let's just mix up our powders until we're happy with the color. You don't need a whole lot. There's maybe just over an ounce in each cup. Now I'm going to layer these colors on the outer edge of the coaster mold. That way we can get those beautiful striations that they make when the clear gets incorporated into it. And hopefully we're going to see all three colors after the end. That looks pretty, but I'm not sure it's enough. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit more because I want to make sure I get the green color. Now, if you put these, and I trust me, I've learned my lesson multiple times trying to mix mica powders together. Well, I should say mica resin together. So usually I would do inner layers next to each other, and I was hoping they would pull in together. It doesn't work. 
it just doesn't work. They end up staying separated and they don't combine together and it's very frustrating. So then I went and I poured some around the edge and I poured them, I just layered them on top of each other and that's how I got them to combine. So hopefully it works today because I think this would be really pretty with all these colors combined for St. Patrick's Day. This one has a lot of sparkle in it and so does the white one. So I don't think I'm gonna add any extra sparkle to the lighter green because this one's pretty good. So if you can't see your stick through it, whether it's a color or wood, it's probably enough mica powder. And this one, I can barely see it. I'm gonna add just a tad bit more so I can't see it at all. And again, this is a Stoyo mica powder, so you can use that coupon code in the description page if you want that set. This is a set of 30 that I ended up with and I love every one of them, especially these sparkly ones. There's a blue one with extra super sparkle too. But because St. Patrick's is not blue, I won't be using that today. I'm not gonna use that stick. Look at this one. I don't know if you could tell, but it is my absolute favorite. They must put a diamond dust in here because it is just stunning. I use it very sparingly because I don't think you could buy it just like that. You'd have to get the whole kit from a Stoyo. Uh, not a, that one's not a Stoyo. That one is Unicone Art. They have a kit of 12. And their colors are very pretty too. But they didn't have any greens. Nothing that I liked for this project. So that's why I did not go with the Unicone. Look at that gorgeousness in there. Alright, so those are good. All I'm going to do is equally, the best I can, let me move this stuff out of the way, I'm going to go around the edge and then I'm just going to layer like I said. Just a thin, thin amount. You don't need too, too much. I mean, get around each one of them and then go back if you have extra and just kind of even them out. You'll be able to see what you're doing. These are large coaster molds, so I don't have a ton. A little over an ounce is not a whole lot of resin to split between four large coaster molds, so. Now make sure your level, your, your surface is level. That way they don't go crooked on ya. All right, so I have a little bit left. I'm just gonna go through and see which ones are skimping this one a little bit. And this one here. I'm just trying to make sure they're pretty similar when they end up. That's why if you pour them all at the same time, they should be very similar to each other. But if you're going to pour them at different times, um, yeah, you better start measuring everything if you want a similar outcome. Because that's almost impossible to do. Temperatures are different, amounts of micas are different, amounts of resins are different. So yeah, be very careful. I think I'm gonna go with the dark one now. I'm just gonna pour this right on top of the white. In the same way, equally among all of them. Whether we get three different colors, I don't know, but we're certainly gonna find out. I have in the past, so I'm just going by my past experience. I am definitely not the final say on this technique. I hope we see some white. I'm just hoping it doesn't, all the white doesn't disappear because I love that sparkle in it. 
let's see, we'll do this one again. And then we'll go back with the light green and do the same thing. All right. And then we just wait. Well, then we're gonna pour the clear and then we just wait. I'm not so sure these are the exact shamrocky colors, but you know, I don't have the exact shamrocky colors in mica powder. So this is my version. Try to keep it a circle though, because if you don't, I mean, I know sometimes it's impossible. It just does its own thing, but you'll get a better pattern if you can keep it circular. See, this one is probably not gonna turn out the same because I don't have the perfect circle here. All right, then we're just gonna take our, our clear and try my hardest to get them about even. I Wait, I'm going to wipe these little dots because you will see that little dot on the back side of this. And that one too. Okay. So let's do this one. That one. one. I'm just going to go down at eye level and see which one is least amount filled. This one. And this one. All right. I'm just going to, they're all pretty similar as far as how much they're filled, so that's pretty good. I'll put you on a time lapse for just a little while, but I'm gonna need my phone quickly, so I will show you a little bit. I'm going to just torch the top real quick. Be very careful, don't burn your molds. I have done it several times. All right, let me show you a time lapse. an hour and it's not as closed up as I want it to be so I'm gonna take this syringe and I'm just gonna kind of suck it out of the middle just to kind of help it close there's not a whole lot in here so push it out unless you clean this with alcohol it's a one-time chance it's kind of hard because there's not a lot to to suck and then just close it as much as you want it closed and then I'm sure it'll continue to move for a while but I was just getting a little nervous and I didn't want it too thick to be able to do this That's better. It's not grabbing a whole lot of resin, like I said. So I'm hoping it's gonna move a little bit more before it's done. 
And like I said, when I see how it ends, I'll either swirl the centers in a little while, or we're going to cover the center with something. But I really like them closed more than I like them that open. And that's just personal preference. You can put whatever you want in the center, glitter or like foils, broken glass, whatever you want. And let's see, I'm gonna do this one just a little more. All right, now I'm gonna leave them alone. I'm just gonna let them do their own thing. They are cured! I think they're really pretty. I did try to swirl the centers. I did suck a lot out, but I didn't get it all. But you can't really see the swirl. But look at the pattern. You could see all three colors, mostly the dark green and the light green. Not much white, but that sparkle is in there from the white. It looks way better in person. So I was thinking, what can I do to jazz these up for St. Patrick's Day? So I went on my Cricut and I cut out these little shamrocks and I think I'm gonna put them in the center before we top coat them. And I don't think I'm gonna put any sparkle or anything in here because they're already really shimmery. I do have like a gold dust that I could put in, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna let them speak for themselves. So I don't think I need transfer tape for these. It's basically just like a sticker. It's all one piece. It's not very complicated. So I'm just going to put these in here and cover up that little center. Perfect, perfect. Number two, make sure you don't have any bubbles. I thought that was a bubble, not a bubble. And I'm going to mix up, I'm gonna mix up about six ounces of my, which one do I wanna to use today? I think I'm gonna use my Quick Cure today. I will just put it through the vacuum chamber to get all the bubbles out so I don't have to really worry about it because I want them to cure quickly. The backs probably won't be so beautiful, but they never are, usually never are for me. I know some people get lucky and uh, have beautiful backs and fronts. So here they are. I think that looks cute, especially for the day we want them. All right, let me grab some resin and um, I'll be right back. So as I'm sitting here stirring, I'm just looking at them, realizing that's the only gold thing in these things. So I am going to put a teeny tiny tiny bit just to tie in the gold to the green a little bit more than this big huge gold shamrock. So I'm just gonna, like I said, a tiny 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 bit. This stuff goes really far. And then I'm going to throw this in the vacuum chamber to get the bubbles out because I did stir it by hand as well. And I created more bubbles than I wanted to. Just a tiny pinch, probably too much. I hope I didn't do too much. I always overboard with this stuff. But I just hope it gives it a little bit of a gold shimmer Well, I can see it. I hope it's not too much. I'm just gonna split this in half because this cup is too full to throw in the vacuum chamber without it bubbling over, making a big mess. So I'm just going to get that done. This is draining in there, so I might as well drain that in there too.
That never gets old, does it? That thing is so cool. All right, let's get these things finished up. I don't want to go crazy because you can't tell from looking at top. I do want to go eye level and see how much I put in here before I fill them up too much and they start spilling over. So I have done that in the past a few times. And if I have something left over, we'll make something else out of it. I don't think I uh, put too much sparkle in. I think it's just the right amount. It's just a nice hint of gold in there. That one went to the edge. That did. This is going. So just look at it from a side view and make sure it's domed, which means there's like a little bubble showing. This one needs a little more. And this one. All right, I will take a picture of what I mean by doming if you are new and put that next. And there is just a tiny little bit left and I've been making a ton of these little pretty roses. So I think I'll just make some more and I'll put these on my little resin birthday cakes. Um, squirt a little bit. I don't see any bubbles in here, but you just never know. And uh, let me get you a picture of the doming. Okay, glitter land, they're done. Here's my extras, some of my extras. I put some pink mica powder in the little um, flower mold. So I'm just like making this huge collection as you can see over here with all my extras. I've got all these roses made and ready for a cake of some sort at some time. <laughs> I have an even more over here, so tons and tons of roses. Maybe I'll make like a bouquet out of them. I don't know. I'll make something out of these. So that is the extras. I have a couple pendants I made over there, but they're not done yet. So I did unmold them because there's really no reveal. And then I took my chrome marker in gold. This one here. I love this thing. It has lasted me so long. And I just outlined the edge and I did the side just to coincide with that shamrock in the center. So what do you think? They are a little transparent. See that? You can see right through them. And here's the back. Nothing spectacular, obviously. And I like these. I like these a lot. So I think what I'm going to do, I was only going to do one more St. Patrick's Day video, but I think I'm going to do a mat, not a matching pair, but I'm going to do four more for my dining room table because my dining room table is all laid out for St. Patrick's Day. And I can use some new coasters, so I'm gonna use these four and then I'm gonna come up with a different scheme, same kind of design, not necessarily of clover in the center, but um, I'm gonna do maybe the opposite colors, gold and cream and green or something, I don't know. But stay tuned for that video coming up in a few days. Anyway, that is it. That is my first coaster of the year for St. Patrick's Day. Stay tuned, you guys. Thanks for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed, help me hit that 20,000. I have a video every day for you guys, so I'm sure you'll find something you enjoy on the channel. All right, I will get you some close-up videos. I will see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day.